Well, dear me, I've just watched this clip from Dr. William Macus. It's a video I re-recorded yesterday. I've just been editing it. And I've just watched, re-watched this bit he's doing on ivermectin and cancer. And it really is quite incredible. So I'm going to put it up as a short clip, watch it now, and then click on the link at the end to watch the whole interview. Because what you find with these long interviews, people don't sit through the whole thing. So this is the ivermectin and cancer clip. Uh, quite amazing stuff to be followed by the... Uh, fenbendazole and cancer clip as well, hopefully shortly. But this is the ivermectin one. And as I dove into that research, into ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, and so on, I discovered uh, a large body of literature, uh, specifically with ivermectin and cancer, mm. and ivermectin in the use of cancer. And I found that very odd and very unusual. And I, and I of course, you know, I was naturally curious, well, why why would ivermectin work in cancer? How does it work in cancer? And so, um, you know, I, I did a, a PubMed search and, and I think something like over 300 peer reviewed papers come out. And, 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 you know, um, in regards to ivermectin and cancer, now it's all preclinical research. And then you start looking at, well, where are the human trials? You know, mm -hmm. I want to see the human trials as well. But you see preclinical research where they, you know, where, they, where they're studying the, the, the cancer cell lines or they're studying it in, in mice or rats. Um, but this preclinical body of research on ivermectin and cancer is so impressive. It's not one or two papers, you know, some a group of researchers tinkering in the lab. You know, these are dozens and dozens of paper, you know, extensive research done. Uh, looking at the various mechanisms of how ivermectin might act in cancer uh, and what cancers ivermectin impact. And it really seems to be a broad anti-cancer agent uh, that that can be used in, in, in a variety of cancers, anything from blood cancers to, to solid tumors as well. And um, it's, it's just a, such a fascinating, uh, it's just such a fascinating molecule because when you look at the mechanisms of action. Now, this is an antiparasitic, a, a very successful antiparasitic, and yet it has different mechanisms of action in cancer. It targets cancer stem cells, for example, mm -hmm. something that I find really fascinating, where it's it's able to uh, attack these cancer stem cells that don't necessarily proliferate rapidly, but you know these are cells that could cause problems in the future, that could cause metastases in the future, that could cause cancer recurrence in the future, and I and I believe that. When you have standard chemotherapy, standard chemotherapy will kill the rapidly dividing cells, mm. um, just based on the nature of, of of the rapid proliferation. But they will not kill slowly dividing cells often, uh, and they, the chemotherapy may not kill cancer stem cells. And so you often hear chemo being referred to as palliative instead of curative. Mm. The intent is palliative to, you know, the, the they will tell you you cannot cure stage four. Uh, pancreatic cancer, for example. You cannot cure stage four ovarian cancer. We can buy you time with chemotherapy, which will kill most of the cancer and, and shrink a lot of the tumors and so on, but it will not kill the cancer stem cells and it will not kill cancer cells that are resistant to that chemo because cancer cells can develop a resistance to certain chemotherapy. They might have, you know, these pumps that just pump the chemotherapy right out of the cell. And so, in some cases, like ovarian cancer specifically, these tumors can develop a resistance to chemotherapy. That's why the oncologist has to change the chemo and go to the next agent and so on. Well, ivermectin can kill cancer stem cells. That chemo can't. Ivermectin can also reverse what's called multidrug resistance in cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And so it can actually sensitize cancer cells to chemotherapy. It's also a radio sensitizer. It can, it can sensitize cancer cells to radiation therapy, for example, as well. Now, it has other actions. It can inhibit the tumor's ability to form new blood vessels, so it can inhibit angiogenesis. Mm -hmm. uh, ivermectin also inhibits certain enzymes called uh, matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes that detach cancer cells from the tumor and allow it to metastasize and spread to other parts of the body through the bloodstream. And so ivermectin will actually inhibit those enzymes um, so that it inhibits metastasis of the tumor, for example. So when you look at it, there's a dozen different mechanisms by which ivermectin acts, acts on the molecular level on cancers. And so then you ask the question, why, where are the human trials?
because that's what it ultimately comes down to. Yes, preclinical research is nice. We have hundreds of papers on ivermectin and cancer. Where are the human trials? And there aren't any. Uh, there are case reports. There's a case series on three patients with leukemia. Uh, I believe two of them were able to achieve some form of remission uh, with ivermectin. Um, and that's it. And we don't have any randomized controlled trials. We don't have any large studies in humans. And then you find out, well, ivermectin has been off patent since the 1990s. I believe Merck held the patent. Uh, uh, the patent expired in 96, I believe. And so it's a cheap drug that's off patent. And then you realize, okay, well, there's no money to be made in, in studying ivermectin in humans for cancer. And where there's no money to be made in oncology, tragically, there the research just doesn't follow. Yeah. And, so, and so you see this, this focus, and this, this happens to a lot of repurposed drugs. And so, for example, you look at something like uh, 